Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kill 10 Rats. Welcome back to the Age of Decadence, where we are in the town of Madara now, having done our dirty work in Terran and now aligned with the Consortium, or no, uh, the Comercium, sorry, the Comercium, the Merchants Guild, and the House Daratan. We've made our way here and been told to visit to contact people. Our stats for the moment are looking like this. We have gained a bit of trading and etiquette in the last uh, stage of our quest for Linos. And we've invested quite heavily into persuasion streetwise and a bit of lore. Crafting as well to get that one artifact. I do need to bump up this to I think five at some point and we'll also need to put some more into persuasion but for now we should be able to resolve pretty much everything that the game throws at us in the early stages of this town with the stats we have let's start by talking to the caravan master here clericus you're too late says a man standing next to an empty stall when you approach him the caravans just left it will take weeks before the next one is ready to depart. Where do you send the caravans to? These days, mostly Ganazar and Kator. Asmara and Kippur are gone. Terran's about to join them. We need markets for our goods, and the local goods to take back to cover the costs and turn some profit. There are a couple of mining villages that can make a trip there worthwhile, but they're an exception rather than the norm. So, as you can see, more confirmation that this world is pretty thoroughly screwed, at least as far as these people can see. Although Fung in Terran hinted at the fact that there is other places out there that the people in this ex-empire aren't really aware of. Now, he mentions two sort of ex-towns, let's ask about those, Asmara and Kippur. The Imperial Guards took over Kippur two decades back and ran it into the ground. Asmara fell a few years ago. Two lordlings tore it apart after their father's death. The way the story is told, the younger son gathered enough support and deposed his older brother, who somehow managed to escape, hired every mercenary company willing to fight for a cut of the action and returned to claim the throne. The siege went on for years and by the time the town fell and the mercenary companies took what they considered a fair share, there wasn't much left of it. Why didn't the guards step in? Now, the guards said that the chapter doesn't allow them to interfere in the internal affairs of the houses, but the way I see it, the weaker the house is, the stronger the guards. At any rate, I don't see them putting their asses on the line just to prop up some lordling. Yeah, so this is sort of the common theme of this world, I guess, where everyone is sort of keeping everyone else down. And thus also keeping basically the entire civilization down for like a short term gain. There's, there's not much collaboration going on here and barely any idealism, of course. So, yeah, th this seems to... This is a bit of a point of, of uncertainty to me. The Ganazar, we can't go there, or maybe we can't go there yet. Last I heard, it is now in the game. So maybe we will be able to go there. But, uh, yeah, not anytime soon. And anyway, we have a lot to do here. Let's actually ask the local guide for 10 Imperials to provide us some background information on the town. Ten Imperials, yells a man standing in the middle of the street. For only ten Imperials, you've got a tour of our glorious city and have all your questions answered. I'm not going to stand here all day, so it's a limited time opportunity only. I will pay him the ten. An excellent choice, says the man in a patronizing manner, as if being pleasantly surprised by an out-of-towner's acumen. Rule number one, stay away from the slums. If the city were a hill, then the slums would be at the very bottom of it, the final destination of all the shit that slowly flows downhill from one district to another. The guards stay away from the slums and so should you, if you have any common sense. The only law there is the thieves guild and it's a very simple law. If you're one of them, nobody fucks with you. If you aren't, you're on your own, which usually means good is dead. Well, thanks for the heads up. We will, of course, head there pretty much immediately after we're done with the traders. No, uh, we will go there though. I mean, we can trust in our glib tongue to keep us out of trouble, usually. How many districts are there in the city? We have five districts, but you should limit your stay to the trade and arena districts. Trust me, you have no business in the other three, but since you paid me, I'm going to cover them in my tour to give you a proper perspective. At the top of the pyramid is the palace district, named after, you guessed it, the palace. 
That's where the nobleborn live if they have the money to afford it. It's nice, clean and crawling with guards. You steal a purse in the arena district and all you're going to get for your trouble is a beating. You even look at a purse in the palace district and the guards will chop off your arm before you can blink just to be safe. Don't say I didn't warn you. Life isn't a picnic even when you have two hands, but if you're down to one it becomes downright unbearable. Then you have the trade district, home to the merchants guild, which pays a fortune in levies and keeps the district on the upper end of the scale. You see that golden dome in the distance? That's the Comercium, which is kind of fitting. Madaran used to be known as the City of Three Temples a long, long time ago. The Comercium bought one, the thieves took another, and the Abyss claimed the third. So now we're the City of Two Temples. One houses the Merchants Guild, the other the Thieves Guild. What can I tell you? It's the sign of the times. The Trade District is for tradesmen, moneylenders, and impoverished nobles. If you're doing well, that's where you settle and consider yourself lucky. The Arena District, the man gestures around him, is all about entertainment. We have the Arena, of course. Taverns, whorehouses, nothing fancy, mind you. If you want a real courtesan, you, got, you go to the Trade District. If you aren't picky and don't want to spend more than a few coins, you'll find plenty of local talent right here. The Imperial Guards barracks are here as well. They don't get involved in the local affairs, of course, but they do try to keep their house clean and keep the slums from growing any bigger than it is. And what's the last district? The Abyss, an old wound that still won't heal. The bastards hit us pretty hard during that big old war, so now we have a mile-long crater filled with fog and ruins, where two districts used to be. Keep in mind that the fog is still as deadly as the day it appeared, so if you're thinking of going in, don't count on coming out. There is an artifact, sort of, I think maybe even two artifacts, that function like respirators. I haven't actually ever tested this, but I've never made it that far into the game, but there is a way to get into the abyss. And there is a way to resolve the abyss, even as a non-combatant, even though it's a bit trickier than to resolve it as a, as a sturdier character, I think. But this is pretty much hearsay, so maybe we, we will make it to that point, maybe we'll just have a peek, but we will have to find some sort of respirator to make that happen. Who rules the city? Well, I guess we know that, but he has some insights to share about the leader of the house, so we'll have a quick listen. Lord Gailey is of House Aurelian, the best lord you could possibly wish for, bar none. He leaves us alone, keeps the levies reasonable-like, and doesn't get any bright ideas like Meru. What's not to like? Besides, he has too many of his own problems to worry about anything else. The palace district is a nest of vipers. You see, when the empire fell, most nobles fled to Madaran. Nobody wanted to go to two-bit towns like Terran or Kippur. Ganazar? It was not for everyone, even before Meru went mad. So as I was saying, most nobles fled to Madaran, and by most I mean several houses with their guards and retainers. Oh, it was bloody. House Aurelian, one of the late arrivals, managed to come up on top, which means that many families ended up at the bottom. Still living comfortably, mind you, but what's comfort for you or me is utter humiliation for the likes of them. Uh, where can I find some work? I'm looking for some people. Do they have names? Domitius Ulpius. Domitius. Domitius. It rings a bell, but for the life of me I can't remember. I think I saw him around here a few times, so maybe he lives here. Then again, maybe he just comes for the entertainment. And what about a good lore master? They say that Master Erebus is as good as they come, but he lives in the palace, so I doubt you'll get a chance to see him. If you're desperate, try Abukar the Mad. You can find him in his observatory in the Trade District. The Mad? He's not altogether there, but some people swear by him. Thanks for the info. So we've heard about a Mad lore master, which, you know, considering we've had dealings with Fung, is not really... that different. <laughs> Fung is more like... Uh shady but you know they all seem to be a bit touched in the head let's move on here towards the arena and that triggers a event of a caravan arriving you hear the sounds of drums announcing the arrival of a caravan and almost immediately crates barrels and sacks start flowing through the gates followed by chained dust covered slaves and tired guards we'll go and take a look once inside the gates, the new arrivals are dealt with with a surprising speed and efficiency. Slaves are taken to the auction block, paid for cargo delivered to the consignees, guards paid and discharged to boost the local economy. All that's left are small-time traders hoping to sell their goods at a profit in the big city and the vultures that prey on them, levy collectors who take all they can and cutthroats who take everything including their lives. One of the traders shakes his head and turns away from a levy collector to think it over. Almost immediately he's approached by two rough-looking men who whisper something in his ear. The trader, still in a state of shock, accepts their generous offer much like a drowning man grasps at straws and follows them to his doom. And being a nosy bugger, and also being sort of on the shady side, we follow them. 
You follow them into a nearby alley, arriving just in time to witness the last act of the drama, the parting of the fool and his gold and possibly life. The thugs, you now three of them, regard you as an extra bonus, two for the price of one. What do we have here? inquires one of the thugs, a skinny man with deep-seated eyes surrounded by dark circles. Now we can kill them all, which means they kill us. We can say, get out of here, in our best gravelly Clint Eastwood voice, or we can sort of pose questions to them, which sounds like initially what you might want to try if you want to be persuasive, but this is a situation where you have to sort of play a hand of poker with no cards that are any good and hope for the best, so we will step on up and regard them as small time to our big time. Get out of here. Or what? asked the thug, spreading his arms and pushing his chest forward. Or what? Do you have any idea who you're talking to, you stupid little fuck? Easy there, friend. We're leaving, says the thug, raising his hands to show that he leaves in peace. And we'll wait for him to leave. So that's our streetwise carrying us there. I don't know how to thank you, says the trader, being visibly shaken. They would have killed me. The bastards would have killed me and taken everything. He hesitates for a moment, then makes a decision and removes a well-adorned dagger from his belt. It's been in my family for generations. My father gave it to me before I left. He told me that once it's unsheathed, it can solve any dispute. But I just couldn't bring myself to draw it. May it serve you better than it served me, stranger. And we have another dagger for our growing dagger collection. Which, given the fact that we are not really fighting is perhaps not the greatest thing in the world, but it's actually not too bad. We have one thing to consider, which if we ever do get into combat, we're not going to be able to hit shit. And this one has a 10% boost to actually hitting something, the THC bonus there, while this has 25 so this is actually, even though it's objectively worse in, in most regards, it's actually better for us than this one, from what I can tell, from, from the way the combat system works. Like I said, we don't really want to get into combat, but if we ever have to survive a round or two, being surrounded by allies and whatnot, or maybe take someone, like a single enemy down, then this might work for our favor. There's also the Arena Master, but the only thing we can really do with him is sign up for a fight in the Arena, and that sounds like a pretty horrible idea. If we go around here, we come up on the barracks. And... Yeah, I, th I don't think there's anything we can do here yet. We can talk to a Legionary, but I don't think he's gonna talk to us. What do you want, boy? Uh, leave. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing really here for us, and we haven't exactly endeared ourselves with uh, with the guards not sure what's going on here I can't really remember but I don't want to go down there quite yet I'm trying to remember there was another event or two yeah there's another event in this district that we can resolve and there's also a sort of a quest giver um, I think we're actually on the wrong side of things here. Yeah, this is where the brothel is. Yeah, this is where Quintus's Palace of Pleasure is located and the entrance to the, the trade district is right here. So this is like, come get some strange for a few coins, lowest price guaranteed or it's free. It's up on, it's up on top here, but we can't really have any dialogue with the guy yet. So we'll not even bother. It's a dingy place anyway. This here is also not leading to anything much. It's a fallen minaret that's blocking one of the gates and there's a bunch of beggars in its shadow. A fallen minaret blocks your way, making the end of the district, marking the end of the district. The gate still stands, but you can see nothing save for some ruins behind it. As you step closer, the temporary occupants of the minaret, several beggars resting on filthy straw beds, give you a hard look, but don't move an inch. Yeah. We're... we're not all that interested. What we are interested in is... Oh God, I'm having a hard time controlling the camera today, sorry about that. What we are interested in is this street corner here. Because I think... yeah, okay, there it comes. As you walk down the street, you hear shouts and see an angry crowd pursuing several men. They chase them into a nearby house and start discussing the best way to smoke them out. A lone guard shows up and tries to calm the tensions, but without visible success, we will approach. And there we have our little scene there. 
Burn them, yells a red-faced burly man, a red-faced burly man in a dirty tunic pointing at the house. The crowd seems to share his animosity towards the house's inhabitants. Nobody's burning anything in my district, says the guard weakly. He tries to infuse his words with authority, but he isn't eager to risk his life to restore order, which only emboldens the crowd. What's going on? It's the nutters, sighs the guard. Now that they've got some numbers behind them, things are starting to get out of control. Earlier they went through the district shouting, pushing over carts and pissing people off. There was a fight. Three dead, a dozen wounded. The preacher and his cronies hold in there, he nods at the house. And now these idiots want to burn it down and have the district with it. The nutters? The mouth breathers who follow these preachers around, eating up every word and asking for more. We didn't see it coming when it started. These preachers were talking crazy but no one listened. So what's the harm, right? And then something changed. Suddenly they were drawing crowds, people were repeating their shit like it meant something. And now we have bloody riots in the middle of the day. And that is the same sort of Crassus type preacher that we threw a rock at in the last town, in Terran. So, let's ask about them. Ever since Meru went nuts and started talking about God, some people took it upon themselves to spread his teaching and bring the fucking light to our darkness. Now, as far as I know, the preachers never said a word about attacking the unbelievers, but maybe they didn't have to. Make a man feel righteous and there is no telling how far he will go. What do they preach? The usual shit, the godless will be punished, the righteous will be shaved. <laughs> Saved. Sorry about that. The righteous will be shaved indeed. We will outlaw beards. Oh dear. Need any help? Can you keep the crowd in check while I go and get more men to handle properly? Mm, we can do that because we're good at this sort of thing. So the guard leaves you in charge and quickly walks away. The crowd gets his hopes up and moves a few steps closer. That preacher ain't going nowhere, says the burly man. We had enough of this shit. And yeah, you know, see, these aren't that great. I mean, we can sort of side with them and once the guard is gone, just, you know, cause a little bit of a disturbance. But since we're good at persuasion and lore, we can just try and, you know, ingratiate ourselves with the guard here because that seems to be a wiser move. The preacher will be dealt with in accordance with the laws of House Aurelian. Any attempt to rob our lord of his right to disperse, to dispense punishment will be considered a grave insult, punishable by removal of the offender's right arm. All right, says the burly man, spitting and narrowly missing your feet. Have it your way, but if we ever catch this fucker in our neighborhood, he's ours. And we'll wait for them to leave and go inside the house. You see a man with a thin face and narrow aquiline nose and fire in his eyes. He must be the preacher. Behind him stand two men, roughed up and bloodied. Who are you? asked the preacher. A friend. It's safe to come out now. The gods worked a miracle through you, my child. Much like they always do. It is the righteous men like you that make this world worth saving. Thank you, brother. So what happened here today? My congregation wanted to share their love for the gods with their neighbors, for it is a duty of every believer to bring the light of true faith into the hearts of others. Yet apparently such roads are filled with perils. The faithful were attacked, spat on, knocked to the ground and beaten. We had to defend ourselves, but our creed isn't a militant one, and we fared poorly. All but these two lucky souls are dead now. Mm, I'm glad I could help then. We're in your debt, and this debt will be repaid. I'll bring word of your deeds to the holy city of Ganazar, House Crassus' reputation increased. I'm actually not sure by how much. Let's have a look. Oh, by one. Okay, so we're, we went from minus four to minus three. So we basically, we still have that uh, negative for siding with Daritan, but we no longer have the, the penalty for throwing the rock, which is okay, I guess. And there is this youthful fellow here that we want to talk to. You see a slightly awkward, light-haired youth, scarcely out of his teens. We approach. I couldn't help but notice that you're heading for the slums, says the youth in a somewhat shy manner. I was wondering if you can do me a favor. In exchange for reasonable remuneration, of course, he adds quickly, trying to sound businesslike. What's the favor? I've uh, entered into a business arrangement with a certain individual who goes by the name of Neros. He asked me to procure certain goods and deliver them to him. Yet, now that I'm about to do it, I find myself being torn by doubts and fears. Such as? I must confess that I've never been to the slums and find the task to be more intimidating than what I've originally envisioned. They say that it's a lawless place where a man's life is worth nothing. Not to mention that I can't help but wonder if Neros is going to pay me what he promised. After all, what stops him from cutting my throat? He touches his throat uncomfortably and taking the goods for nothing. So where do I come in? 
You seem to have a certain air about you. I don't think that Nerus would dare playing games with you. He promised to pay me 3,000 Imperials. I'd be willing to part with 500 Imperials if you were to deliver the package and collect the money. And yes, we do have a certain air about us, and generally that works out quite well for us. We also have some points in trading now, so we can sort of try and gamble for a bigger split here. We'll split it 50-50, since it looks like I'll be doing all the work here. This is highway robbery, protests the youth, but I suppose I don't have a choice, do I? Mm, you don't indeed. So what's in the package? Black powder, sulfur, salpietre, sa things of that nature. And why does Nero's need these things? I don't see why it's any of my business, or yours for that matter. Can't this Nero's buy these things in the slums? Not if he wants quality, says the youth, smiling haughtily. I doubt that Lord Galeas' own alchemist would take commissions from the likes of Nero's. Yet a young lordling is eager to do it for him. The youth's face turns red. I've lost a lot of money in a game of chance. It was rigged, I'm sure, so I refused to pay. The proprietor sold my debt to Neros. Well, all right, we'll do it. Thank you, says the youth with relief, handing you a heavy package. His house is somewhere around the old temple. He told me it's easy to find. Yeah, we're gonna do that later. Um, as I said, I, I want to give the slum a look. Um, can't really remember the skill checks that are in there, but we will be able to make it worth a while and we also will be able to make that like come together in our favor with the amount of loose skill points that we still have to distribute. I'm pretty sure Streetwise Persuasion will see us through. I think there might even be a crafting check there. There's also the Abyss, of course, which, um, you know, could be interesting, but definitely not this early in the game. So let's go to the Trade District, since that's basically what we came here for. You enter the Trade District, the glittering heart of Madaran's economy. A stream of merchants and their goods flow through the arteries of his district, a tide ebbing and flowing but never ceasing. Towering over the district is the Golden Dome of the Comercium headquarters. Once a temple to the old gods, now a place of worship for the only god the Comercium truly believes in. Money. Pay, 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 says one of the traders, heading out and cursing loudly. Pay to reach the city, pay to enter the city, pay for the privilege to sell my own wares. Where does it stop? Uh, why do you come here then? As much as I hate to admit it, but it's the only real market. Nothing else comes close, so you either starve yourself selling your wares to a few villages and outposts that are still around, or you pay through the nose to take your wares to Madaran. What other choice is there? So you're not with the Comercium? I work for myself, that's why I went into trading to begin with. It's not easy and you have to stay out of smaller towns, but Madaran is big enough to handle all the trading it does now and then some. Of course we have to rent stalls from the Comercium and pay them a hefty cut at the end of the day, but like I said, what other choice is there? Well, joining them maybe, but you know, why do you stay out of the smaller towns? Small towns can only handle so much business, so if you bring your wares there, you'll be taking business from the Comercium and they won't like it one bit. Of course you can sell directly to them, but it won't even cover the trip. So like I said, you either go to Madaran or service villages and outposts, and they can't afford to pay much. If they pay you with produce and ore, you still need to sell it, which brings us back to Madaran. What about Ganazar? I tend to stay away from it. The market is smaller, so you sell less and at lower prices, but you pay the same levies. Not to mention that ever since Meru started preaching, Ganazar is ruled by mobs of zealots, which, while the guards do nothing to rein them in. If you want my advice, stay away from it too. Sound like... A plan, for now at least. Uh, who's running the Comercium here? Strabos. He's alright if you pay on time and keep your word. Of course, you've missed the payment or try to skip town, it's another story, but that's the nature of the business. Strabos it is. That's who we came here to see. And he's right in here. It's our, you know, Comercium building, the former temple with the Golden Dome. And we are already expected. The goal, right? Strabus is expecting you upstairs. That's fine, since that's what we came here for. So... I am the goal from Terran. Alright, go up. Strabus is expecting you. Master Strabus, known as Lord Strabus behind his back, started his career as a laborer for a small trading company. His chance came when the head merchant was assassinated in a particularly vicious takeover attempt. While others hesitated to step forward in fear of making themselves the next target, Strabos, who had nothing to lose, seized the moment and stepped into the recently vacated position. He didn't know much about the day-to-day -day running of the business, but he knew how to use brute force better than any of his predecessors. 
Strabus took his lesson to heart. He understood that quick bold action was often enough to carry you to victory, and it was this attitude that gave him an edge over his rivals, pushing him all the way up to the top. We'll greet him. Ah, the Gaul! Come in, come in, I've heard quite a lot about you, but I've got to warn you, Maldoran isn't some sleepy little village, it's a big city. Everything's big here, money, games, stakes. Linus might be happy to play second fiddle to Antidus, he probably even considers himself very clever for getting rid of Carinus, but let me assure you, that's not how we do things around here. I asked Linus to give me one of his best for a reason. What I need is a fresh face, I need someone very loyal to us, yet virtually unknown. I need you to talk to certain people, powerful people, and see where their loyalties lie. If an opportunity presents itself, persuade them to show a certain flexibility. Why do you need a fresh face? I can't have any of my men seen paying social visits to people of importance. In a city where intrigue is a local sport, such visits won't be overlooked. It must be a newcomer. And what exactly will I be persuading them of? Gaius isn't interested in sharing his power. He thinks he can rule alone. I understand the sentiment, I really do, yet the truth is no man can rule alone today. Since Galius is too stubborn to listen to the voice of reason, he must be replaced with a more suitable candidate. And who is the candidate? His nephew, Serenus. Galius should have known better than to let that wretch live. What do you mean, let him live? The boy is worse than useless. No skills, no ambitions, no desires. He spends most of his time betting whores who gave him the title Victorious. He's an embarrassment to the family, yet he is family. Had Galius been a smarter man, he would have staged an accident and plucked that hole. But his sister adores the boy and hopes to see him on the throne one day. I think we can make her a very happy woman and help her realize the dream earlier than she could have ever expected. Uh, whom do you want me to talk to? Any man can be killed, even a man like Galius. I believe you were a first-hand witness to such events in Terran. You also experienced the chaos of the aftermath. We don't want chaos. We don't want infighting. We want. We don't want to give hope to people like Antidas or all the other two-bit lords with a claim to the city. We want everything done properly and orderly. Are we on the same page, the goal? Actually, we may not be, but of course we're not going to tell him that, since if we can swing this in a way that allows Antidas to extend his grasp on the city, maybe we can do that instead. Since, you know, we are siding with the underdog. But on the other hand, you know, we'll do what's best for our character here. So yeah, so far we're on the same page. So when Galius falls, another must take his place without delay. Influential nobles must immediately announce their support and accept him as the true and only heir to the throne. Imperial guards must do the same and stand firm to prevent any attempts of throwing our city into chaos. Talk to Lady Luenza Kalani of House Kalani. Her house held Madaran until Galius' forefathers showed up on force and took the city from them. Promise her whatever she wants, her support is crucial and she knows it. Next on the list is Legatus Pavola of the Imperial Guards. He has no reason to support Galius, but he won't be eager to be a pawn in our games either. Talk to Lord Zena too, see where he stands. He doesn't have as much influence as Lorenza, but his is an old name. In the right circles it still carries a lot of weight. Mm, I have a few questions. Ask, says Travos, glancing at the sand glass. What can you tell me about Madaran? It's the last great city, the only city that's left. Then again, how many great cities do we need, eh? It has everything one could ever wish for, so why would you live anywhere else? Hmm... So, what does Master Linus think of your plan? Linus has enough on his plate, he doesn't have time to worry about mine. Not that his opinion matters in this case. And uh, let's talk about something else. Uh, no, nothing at the moment. We leave. And so there we are, we are thrown into a bit of a conspiracy here, where we have to gather co-conspirators to remove, you know, the lord of the place. Seems like a similar setup as in Terran, at least, you know, on, in general principle. We weren't removing the lord, we were removing the head of the guards, but, you know, in the end we just have to find the ways and the means without exposing ourselves. And that's exactly what we're going to start working on next time. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye for now.